We need, we need some masala. Uh, so anyway, that's the that's the nature of the uh, the gray water system, and so what uh, what we do then is if you take a regular plumbing wall, uh, and you know you've got uh, the washing machine and dryer, and then you got the bathtub, and you got the sink. You got the toilet. Over here, you got the kitchen sink. Well, we take the uh, the kitchen sink and the toilet, and we take them straight out and say, this is the front of the house right here. We take the kitchen sink and the toilet, and we take them straight out to a conventional septic tank. And that septic tank goes into an outdoor botanical cell, which you can see at the Sutton job. That's, that's, that's enough to treat the water right there because you're taking half of the water and treating it inside with the gray water system, more than half. So your washing machine, your bathtub, your lavatory, they all go to the botanical cells inside the building and inside the greenhouse however many of them you have. What we do to, to fool the authorities is as this gray water goes into the botanical cell, we have a three-way valve here that can allow it to go into the botanical cell or let it bypass on and go right back to the, bla to the, gr to the black water. So really, what we have in place at any given time is a conventional system. Every piece of plumbing, every fixture, if, the, if you turn the three-way valve, goes to the septic tank. That's what they want to see. That's their worm pill in a ball of hamburger. Uh, they, well, you got a conventional system. And I showed it this way to the authorities. I actually have a, I think it's in the water from the sky book. I have a letter from the main authority, who is now dead, of the state of New Mexico. And he said, in that you have a conventional system inherently in your system, you don't even need a variance. Because the, even the Blackwater Botanical Cell, they don't count it. We go out of it and put in a conventional drain field. They only cost six or eight hundred dollars. And they, it never gets used because all the stuff goes into the septic tank. And we turn the three-way valve so that all the gray water goes into the botanical cells. At the end of the line of the botanical cells, you suck the water back to flush the toilet with so you're using the same water. So what happens in the septic tank is we size it as if it were a normal septic tank, but it's only using half the volume, and then half the volume can easily be treated in a, a uh, something like a 14 by 40 foot botanical cell, which is laying open out there at Sutton, so you can see it. And, and the septic tank is going right into it. But to keep them happy, this is just disregarded by them. We call it pre-treatment, and some of them appreciate it, but they don't consider it. So what we have when we turn the three-way valve for everything to go in the septic tank, it just runs through this, they ignore it, and they have a septic tank and a drain field. And if it's in the city, it, we take it through the septic tank and on into the municipal sewage. So we have given the authorities a conventional system so they don't have to fret over approving of ours. And the reason for that is because state officials don't make that much money. They're not being paid to take risks on people's ideas, even though they may be, you know, headed toward carbon zero and whatever. They just have to go by the book. So we let them go by the book. So then what really happens outside is it's another botanical cell. It doesn't need a, the septic tank serves as the grease and particle filter. If you don't know it, what goes on in a septic tank is an anaerobic process where bacteria is broken down, solids are broken down into a liquid. The liquid goes into the botanical cell, the botanical cell is full of plants, and they oxygenate the water and use the water. And we have gotten the size down to where there's nothing that comes out. The drain field is, abandoned, is, is worthless, but we put it in to make them happy. And then what that does is we spread these botanical cells out and make them shallower and strategically located so that the building then 
has all these green spots happening around it from the botanical cells. There's your landscaping. There's your water for your outdoor plants. And uh, the, uh, you can see that on the, the newer ones, it's hard to see it uh, because it's not happening yet. But some of the older ones, which I don't know if Kirsten's taken you to, you really see lush, lush green in contrast to the dry, parched mesa. And that's the nature of an earthship. It brings green. No water that ever falls from the sky on your property ever goes away from your house. It's, it's just going into plants and whatever. So that's the, that's the sewage system uh, to take that into different climates. Uh, uh, the experiment we did at the Phoenix is the, the outdoor botanical cells, we just ended up building a greenhouse over them so that we can illustrate how this can work in a severe norther cold climate. You, you, you know, the, the green is not going to be that impressive or functional if it's 40 below zero for six months. So it's just not going to work that well. Uh, so if you build a greenhouse over it, all of a sudden you have a whole lot more food production and a whole lot more sewage treatment and another buffer zone and on and on and on and more water catchment because you got more roof. The Phoenix is illustrating that. The Phoenix's entire system is enclosed. And uh, you, you can grow food. Uh, you, the, the, the food, if you grow food out of the black water, you, well, all of it, test it. We always test the food. Uh, and you take it to a testing agency and you get it tested. Uh, we, we test, what we do is we'll test an artichoke out of our system and we'll test an artichoke from the health food store. And if they test similar, then, then that's, that's good enough. Uh, there are things online, we're going to get this uh, out and documented, that tell you what items are most easy to produce out of even black water, other than, you know, say, if, other, other than just landscaping. I'd be satisfied with this, just that. But uh, you can break your black water into a series of cells. In other words, uh, you have one cell, then another cell, then another cell. The best one to eat out of is the last one because it's gone through the cells before it and oxygenated. I mean, I wouldn't eat out of the very first black water cell out of the septic tank without super testing it. But we've, we've done a lot of different tests and it's always been good. Uh, of course, the gray water is fine. You can produce a lot of food uh, by salvaging every drop of water that you have. So uh, nothing ever leaves. And then, like I say, you, you can do this completely outside uh, in, a in, a, in a temperate climate. You don't even have to have uh, greenhouses for it. Uh, but, but there's all kinds of little idiosyncrasies. What if you're in an area like where we're going in Texas that gets uh, 40, in, uh, I mean, four inches of rain a month? Uh, what would happen there? is your outdoor black water cell would get saturated with rain. So what we have to do in situations like that is one, sometimes we have to put a greenhouse over it for that reason, not to protect it from the cold, but to protect it from the rain because the water for it comes from the sewage itself. In a not quite as bad of a situation, we'll put it out in front and slope the surface of it and we catch the water off the front face and take it in to flush with and uh, even on the highway landscaping, they have these membranes that just have holes for the plants to come out, and the water then runs off of it, so you can, you can fill this with your sewage water to water your plants and get the sky water to go away from it. So there are a lot of different applications of this relative to your temperature and your length of winter and your level of rainfall. Different conditions make it so you may have to protect our greenhouse over it here in this climate. We don't get enough rain to, to mess with it at all. All it does is stash some of the rain as well. Uh, one other aspect of this, which I just mentioned, but I'll, you can see it at the Sutton house best. Uh, we catch all the water off the roof of the house, dump it into the cisterns, like I was saying. But the front face catches a little water, and it doesn't. it's too low to go into the cistern. So we put a gutter at the bottom of the front face, run the gutter around, and dump it into the botanical cells, they get washed out with rainwater and even stashed up with rainwater and they're all set. The botanical cells at the end of the line 
have an overflow that goes to the septic tank anyway. And then the septic tank runs to an outdoor botanical cell, and then if that ever overflowed, it would overflow into a conventional drain field. We need, we need some masala.